Well, the, the, the beautiful thing about the, uh, the oil sands coming from Canada is that uh, Canada does not have the refinery capacity uh, that we have in America. Uh, and so therefore, it's a, it's a really good partnership uh, with our closest ally. Uh, it's good for their economy, good for our economy. Uh, we have a wonderful symbiotic relationship with Canada, like-minded, similar values. Uh, it's safe for the economy, um, it's safe for the environment. Uh, so I think that, that uh, Canada has made it very clear that if the President and the administration continues to pass on this incredible opportunity for both countries, then they're going to have to market that oil to China. Well, the only way to get that oil to China is to put it on ships uh, and ship it over to China overseas. Well, if you care about the environment, then clearly you, can, uh, you would have to agree that it's much safer uh, above ground through a pipe uh, than to put that oil uh, in tankers uh, through difficult seas and uncharted waters uh, to get it across the seas to China. So, you know, I think it's a, it's a common sense. This isn't hard um, and, and uh, it just it really drives you crazy when you realize uh, how easy this is. Uh, so it's really because of the refinery, to your question, because of the refinery capacity. Now I agree with your, your, the premise of your question that we need to take advantage of the natural resources that we have. The United States of America uh, enjoys the, the largest uh, uh, natural resource capacity uh, that we should be tapping into for energy. Uh, it's, it, it, it really removes us and, uh, from being dependent upon uh, foreign nations, many of those that don't care for us, um, uh, that, uh, uh, and it would create jobs. So uh, it would be kind of you know, two birds with one stone. Now, <clears throat> explain to me this restore. I know you're neck deep uh -huh. in this restore. Can you yeah. give, uh, give our readers or viewers some, some insights on sure. it? Sure. As your viewers uh, and readers uh, recall, uh, we had the, uh, the Deep Horizon uh, incident in the Gulf, uh, the Macondo well, uh, when it blew and the oil that, uh, uh, that you know, were, was emptied into the uh, Gulf of Mexico. Uh, the Restore Act is, a, is an effort that was uh, uh, started by the five states and the congressional members uh, along the areas that were most impacted uh, by the oil spill, uh, Florida being one of the five states, uh, Florida, Alabama, uh, Mississippi, uh, Louisiana, and Texas. And so the, we, we created a, really a coalition, um, uh, and, and in the Republican House, uh, we knew that that would not be enough, so therefore, uh, to really get the legislation into law, so therefore it's really a bipartisan um, uh, effort uh, with Democrats, and uh, on the Senate side, uh, Senator Nelson, uh, Senator Rubio, uh, both uh, were a part of getting the bill through this, you know, uh, introduced on the Senate side. On the House side, uh, we looked at uh, uh, taking the monies, uh, how the Restore Act works is the fine monies that, is, that are going to be levied to, to BP uh, because of the violations of the Clean Water Act uh, from the EPA. We said that it would be um, wonderful if those fines money, at least 80 percent of the fine money, were directed to the states that were uh, impacted most. Uh, not just the environment of those five states, but also the economies, because we have we, we we need economic restoration as well as environmental restoration. And so, what the Restore Act does is it creates a um, it creates a structure on on how that money, once the fines are levied, once BP pays the fines uh, into the treasury, how 80 percent of those dollars, uh, and some speculate that that the fine money was going to be between five and 20 billion dollars. So 80 percent of that. Uh, is going to be directed to the states uh, most affected by the disaster. 